Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. This is Lecture 14, Planck's Law and the Photoelectric Effect. Recall that, um, that, uh, that the last lecture, we ended the last lecture uh, with the rayleigh genes Law, um, where, and we recall that Rayleigh and Jeans um, use classical arguments to derive an expression for the black body spectrum. Remember we saw that the black body spectrum uh, has this peak, um, and I'll show it to you again a little bit later in the lecture, it has a peak. Uh, the, the energy radiated or the, the intensity radiated goes to zero at very short wavelengths and goes to zero at very long wavelengths, and then in the middle there's a peak. It's an asymmetric peak. And furthermore, that there was um, a couple different phenomenological laws which were observed, and that is that uh, the Vian's law which was that the there was a that the maximum in this spectrum uh, depended on um, the temperature uh, to the to the uh, I guess to the one over it's uh, inversely proportional to the temperature and that the um, also that the uh, total power radiated per unit area um, was proportional to temperature to the fourth power. So this rayleigh genes law, um, which is written down here, the total power radiated per unit area per unit wavelength of a black body is equal to 2 pi c k t divided by lambda to fourth. Again, um, k is the Boltzmann constant, t is the temperature, c is the speed of light, and lambda is the wavelength. So this is um, the basically predicts a spectrum. Um, this this is incompatible with both the Vian's law and um, Stefan Boltzmann law because um, in the, the, this clearly does not have a maximum. Um, as lambda keeps getting bigger, then the power radiated keeps getting smaller, so there's no maximum. And if you integrate over this, um, over the wavelength, if you integrate this expression over the wavelength to get the total power radiated over all wavelengths, which is uh, what Stefan, well, which is what the Stefan Boltzmann law uh, is relevant to because they were considering the total power, um, then that integral will diverge because at lambda, at small, at very small values of lambda, so very short wavelengths corresponding to the ultraviolet or even shorter wavelengths of light, then um, again this integral is going to diverge. This, this quantity here is going to get very large and um, it will diverge. And this was called the ult ultraviolet catastrophe and it basically predicted that all black bodies would radiate with infinite amount of power, um, particularly in um, uh, in the uh, ultraviolet, where lambda gets to small, where lambda is small. And so we had we, we were left with this. We left we left off the last lecture with this conundrum, the ultraviolet catastrophe. And so now we're going to address this. Uh, Planck, Max Planck, basically addressed this. Um, and after we do that, we're going to talk about the uh, photoelectric effect that Einstein um, sort of explained. So let's start first with, um, with Planck's law. So as we're going to see, um, what Max Planck did is he, he showed that if, you, if energy comes in discrete chunks or bits uh, as given by h nu or Planck's constant times the frequency. Planck, Planck's constant, the constant named after him, is, in his honor, is um, is just a fundamental constant of nature, uh, which is also equal to h times c divided by lambda, c over lambda, speed of light divided by the wavelength. So if energy came in discrete chunks um, of these values, uh, instead of being continuous as we would expect uh, from a wave, then the ultraviolet catastrophe could somehow be fixed. So this is what Planck showed. Um, now remember, one of the fundamental assumptions that Rayleigh and Jeans made was that the average energy in the modes within the cavity, remember that we showed that only certain uh, modes, standing wave modes, can exist in the cavity because only, only those modes will fit into the cavity given the uh, boundary conditions that the electric field has to be zero at the at the uh, surface of the cavity, the metal cavity, and they assumed that the energy, the average any energy for each one of those modes was the same and equal to the uh, k times t. Uh, 